Welcome to our video devotional here at Covenant Keepers Ministries for Monday, December 30th, 2019. We have been taking a lengthy period of time to look at the miracles of Christ. Our desire, our desire is for all of us to, to look at Jesus, to be and stay connected to him. So today we're looking at the miracle of, of Christ walking on the water, as well as Peter walking on the water. And we're going to uh, three different scriptures, Matthew, Mark, and John. First in Matthew chapter 14, verses uh, 22 through uh, 33. Here's what it says. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on a mountain by himself to pray. And when evening had come, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now on the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. <clears throat> in Mark's Gospel, chapter 6, the same story, and we're... We're reading at verse 45 through 51. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side to Bethsaida while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. Now when evening came, the boat was in the middle of the sea and he was alone on the land. Then he saw them straining at rowing for the wind was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea and would have passed them by. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them and said to them, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. Then he went up into the boat to them, and the wind ceased, and they were greatly amazed in themselves beyond measure <clears throat> and marveled. Then in, chap in John chapter 6, and beginning at verse 15, reading through 21. <clears throat> Therefore, when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again to a mountain by himself alone. And when evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into the boat, and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was now dark, and Jesus had not come to them. Then the sea arose because a great wind was blowing. So when they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near the boat, and they were afraid. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they willingly received him into the boat, and immediately the boat was at the land where they were going. <clears throat> you will notice that in Mark and Luke, it doesn't record that Peter walked on the sea just in, in uh, Matthew. Uh, there's just nothing too difficult for the Lord. Walk on water? <sighs> so it makes me think, what will our new resurrected and glorified, glorified bodies be like? Because Jesus, the Son of God, could walk on water. And obviously it caused Peter to walk on water. Evidence of Christ's ability to do anything is displayed in this miracle. The conclusion that the disciples drew from this miracle is recorded in Matthew 14, 33. Where they said, truly, you are the Son of God. Remember, there was a storm raging on the water. The wind was boisterous. The boat was tossed by the waters. This is not calm water that Jesus was walking on. I don't know how high the swells were, but the disciples were troubled and they were seaworthy sailors. The wind ceased when Peter and Jesus got into the boat. Life often involves storms. Sometimes it seems the circumstances are way over our head. Look carefully in the storm because no matter how high the waves, no matter how tragic the circumstances, Christ is on 
the top of the water and not sinking into it. Peter was called to the side of Christ from the boat. He jumped right in and he likewise walked on the water. But when he had observed the wind was blowing so hard, he was afraid, began to sink and he cried out to the Lord to save him, which we know Jesus did. He did save him. But it was a miracle that Peter also walked on the water. When our eyes are focused on Christ, we can ride above the waves. We are overcomers. But when our focus is on the crazy storm, we often become filled with fear and begin to be overwhelmed by the events of life. It sure is simple what we're supposed to do. Keep our eyes on Jesus. GotQuestions.com has a great quote, and I, I want to read it. Jesus always comes to us in the storms of life. This is reminiscent of the words of Isaiah, of God to, to Isaiah. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. The Lord may not come at the time we think he should come because he knows when we need him the most. Jesus has, had waited until the boat was far as far from land as possible when all their hope was gone. In essence, Jesus was testing the disciples' faith and this meant removing every human prop. Why did Jesus walk on the water? To show his disciples that the very thing they feared, the raging, seething sea, was merely a set of steps for him to come to them. Often we fear the different difficult experiences of life, such as illness, loss of loved ones, financial hardships, only to discover that these experiences can bring Jesus closer to us. End of quote. Are you in a storm right now? Get ready. Jesus is about to invade your storm. Let's pray. We're looking for you right now, Lord. We're looking for you in the storm we're in right now. We got our eyes fixed on Jesus. And we see you coming toward us to deliver us, to help us to walk through the difficulty and come out as overcomers. We put our faith in you because you're trustworthy. And we give you praise for that today in Christ's holy name. Amen. Get ready. Jesus is about to invade your storm. Be blessed today as you keep your eyes focused on him. Have a great day.